Oh, there he is. I see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, there you go. Yo. Yeah, hey, how's it going? How's it going, yo? How's it going? Yo. Pretty good. Thanks for hosting this All and right. setting this up. No problem. No problem. You know, we're, again, this is, uh, this is something that we just started. It's like our, our fourth time, our fourth Twitter space. And um, this is just a time to really give the value and provide as much educational information as possible. So I'm just happy that you're able to be here t- uh, today as well. Um, we're going to get some people, more people in here uh, in a little bit. We'll just set up. But how's your Saturday going? It's good, man. I'm headed out to Paris tomorrow. So just getting, you know, a few last minute things going. But um, just nice. happy to be here. And, you know, huge shout out to Stevie. You know, we've been talking for a while. <laughs> part of the Everi fam. So always happy to be here. And just, you know, thanks for, that and for giving me the space. Yeah, no problem. Um, what's up, Richard? What's up, all? Yeah, How y'all doing? Up? Pretty good. Doing, doing well, doing well. Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, going amazing right now. I don't know how to feel about this. ETH is just going insane. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, with, with the <laughs> new uh, September date and all that, you know, I, I, yeah, I see really bright merch. things on the horizon. And, you know, I, I think everything's going to line up with what the data has been showing us. All right, so we got the whole crew in here. Um, Steven, if you don't mind, pop up that tweet, uh, and we'll get that rolling. Yep, just put it up there. So for everyone in the space that sees that pinned tweet, um, might take a second for it to load, but if you see it now, if you could please like and retweet it, we just want as many people, as many eyes on Everi, as well as as many ears on the alpha that we're about to share. Um, it's it's going to be great. I'm very excited. And a uh, huge shout out to Andalou. I really appreciate you taking the time out today to discuss with us. Always, man. Thanks again for reaching out. Steven, Steven be out there in the DMs all the time. And sometimes I don't <laughs> reply. I just like, huge shout out, Steven. Always following up, for real. Been He's sneaky with the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The DMs be wild sometimes. But yeah. I always see Steven following up, and I really respect that. So, um... I mean, if you guys are are ready, I mean, we can wait a little bit, get a few more people in here, and then we can start. Um, if that's if that's fine with you, Steven, yeah, you want to like? All right, well, I'll take another minute to let some people in. What's up, everyone? Though, thank you for joining. I see a lot of familiar faces in the audience. Yeah, yeah. I was just about what's to up? say that. What's up, Jay? <laughs> Yeah, Jay Hunt, Eve Lizard, Everett Lord Hunter, Marcus, always showing love. Appreciate it all for coming to the spaces. It's always refreshing to see so many familiar people. You know, it's just it's really cool. And uh, I guess before we start, too, um, we have our YouTube channel up. So if you want to see our uh, latest Twitter Spaces. We have two YouTube channels. We have the main one where you can listen through the whole hour through. And if you don't have the time, right, you can go into our second channel and you can listen to the clips where we uh, had the best clips from our Twitter spaces so you can get the juiciest info pretty quick. (laughs) So check that out. We'll be having this uh, Twitter space on our YouTube channel as well afterwards if you want to look back and listen in if you're going on a jog and want to catch up or something. (laughs) So, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll get started. We have some people in here and as things go on we'll have uh there we go we got some more people coming all right cool i guess we'll start steven so um if you want to start it off and uh get things rolling for sure so i definitely think we should start with introduction so first of all i'll introduce myself who i am so uh hey everyone it's nice to be here uh my name is steven Forschner, and i've been full-time in web3 for two years now um throughout my journey i've worked with numerous projects and also i've invested in many as well so I'm also really excited to be here today. Uh, and as you can see, as my profile picture, I'm a holder of EverEye. And I, I've actually been a part of the community since the initial dip during Reveal. Um, I think my initial entry was like 0.139 ETH. <laughs> it was it was really How do you awesome. remember that? <laughs> Dude, I, it's, it's when, when you love something so much, you remember it. I'm telling yep, you. that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I'm also really excited to be here because honestly, I've always had questions that I want to be able to ask Andalou. And I really appreciate you taking the time out today to discuss with us and so in front of so many familiar new faces it's honestly really awesome and uh i'll let you all introduce yourself from now so uh mark you want to go next yeah sure so it's nice to meet you all i'm mark forschner uh i've been full time in this space which is crazy to say for close to three years now um time literally flew by 
Uh, honestly, I kind of blinked and now I'm like three years into this. Uh, but I love every moment of it. Um, you know, throughout my time, I've worked with over 60 plus projects on both the DeFi and NFT side, um, you know, helping plan out strategies regarding marketing and community building and basically seeing the ins and outs uh, of a lot of community, uh, sorry, uh, companies and communities in this space from startups to working alongside, you know, top 500 market cap coins in this space. So again, it's a pleasure to, to be here and to, um, you know, share all this education alpha with you guys. And I guess I'll, I'll give my, my mic to, to Richard now. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, this is uh, Richard Scheufler, uh, you know, 20-year marketing specialist. Uh, in that time, uh, you know, started several companies, uh, you know, marketing-related, and also started in the crypto, like, back in 2013. And, you know, around two years ago, started the NFT Art Gallery and, you know, uh, building one of the largest collections out there right now by, by one single owner. So, uh, pleasure to be here. And, you know, also on top of all this great stuff and bringing the magic and helping to advise Digibridge. So great to be here. Nice, man. Y'all are legends. Uh, so happy <laughs> to be, you know, surrounded by such talented people and experienced people in the space. You know, for people that don't know me, I'm on blue. I've been in the space since around 2017. Um, you know, really started as like a trader collector at first. Um, and then I uh, co-founded Screenshot Labs back in July of last year. Um, and then we, you know, recently launched Everi back in March and, um, been full time ever since then. Before this, I came from the esports and YouTube world. Um, so kind of always been deep in love with content, and obviously, anime and gaming has been very dear to me. So just happy to you know bring that passion and energy you know into Eberai and and into the space. Awesome, awesome. And uh, I I heard you mention uh, anime, and I actually have a question. Uh, if you're ready to start, um, Let's I'm very it. excited. Awesome. So yeah, this question is actually it, it, it's it's really cool to me. I've always wanted to be able to ask this to you. So to start, um, I wanted to talk about the video that was posted on the screenshot YouTube channel. Uh, the title is "Whatever I Means to Me," and uh, one part in specific I wanted to touch on was when you mentioned how you grew up watching all kinds of anime, and now you're working with Madi and, and Katan, who have literally made some of your favorite scenes and shows. So I was wondering what what do you think has contributed to the position you're in today? Oh man, what a, what a great question, Stephen. And and honestly, I think a lot of what I do in my life is really kind of just following my passion and heart. Um, and honestly, it led me to places that I never thought, you know, I would be. Right. And I think you know what led me to the position of Everi and and meeting with Medi and Quentin is the authenticity of what we wanted to build, really. And I think that. That, that really resonates with everyone in the team. It's not just me, you know, who grew up watching a lot of stuff, but, you know, a lot of people around the team. And, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, you know, the vibes, right, for lack of a better term, and kind of, you know, putting out the energy that you want to receive. Um, and that led me to, to a lot of different places, right? And I guess more from a professional career standpoint, um, you know, I just happened to, to run in a lot of circles in the YouTube and in the gaming scene and and a lot of building communities and products, you know, back in Web 2. And, you know, really what led me into Web 3, and I and I really value that experience of the past because, you know, the, as much as it was fun to make YouTube, you know, channels and videos um, and work in the gaming scene, I always felt like, for me, the biggest part was um, that true connection to your community. Um, I'm not saying it wasn't there back in Web 2, but, you know, I wasn't chatting in Discord every day like I am in Web 3 or not you know, watching anime nights together is really about like, you know, what next video are we going to release? And you kind of chat in YouTube comments, but y'all know how YouTube comments be sometimes, you know? So, you know, I really value the connection that, you know, I have, right? Like it's the universe, like we met in Azuki before, right? And Hunt, we just met in Everi and Jay's, you know, we met in Everi as well. Mild Bits has been with us since, you know, uh, Game of Blocks. So really just like, it's really cool to authentically meet friends in the space and kind of go on this journey together. Um, and I think that really is what contributed, you know, a lot to the position I am today is, you know, I'm just being me and I'm just being the best version I can be. Right. And, and kind of we're all on this journey together. And, and at the end of the day, you know, who knows where this goes. Right. But as long as we have our North star and we're bonded by the things that we love, right. Whether it be anime, whether it be gaming, whether it be NFTs, you know, you know, whether it just be the space in general. Um, and I think, you know, that that's like kind of, kind of how I live my life. And I'm just very honestly thankful and, and blessed to be in the position that I'm in. And, 
And I'm always happier, you know, to help other people, you know, kind of help achieve, you know, what they want, right? Jay just, uh, you know, perfect example, Jay really wanted to start learning development. And I was like, dude, like, let me, you know, let me put you in a DM with our developers. Uh, Chris and Remy, who have you know, been OGs in the space for a while. So, you know, I think for me, I've always uh, looked to pay it forward. Um, I definitely did not get here alone. There was a lot of people that helped me on my journey. And I'm thankful for everyone in my life that, you know, affected my path. And I just hope to do the same for others as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, it, it, it all starts with uh, that conviction within you, right? Like just listening to everything you've been saying, like you're a go-getter at this, uh, you know, just you, you like to, to really explore and, and not be afraid to, to to make mistakes and learn at the same time from it, right? I mean, that's how you grow as an individual, just from like listening to everything you say. And that's, that's the beautiful part about it. And I love what you're saying about, you know, um, giving forward and, and really reaching out and helping the, the community members themselves to kind of explore, you know, even their own potential growth, right? Like, you know, a community is so dynamic in that sense. And I see, <laughs> we see a lot of projects too that, that kind of treat it as like a one-off thing where it's not growing together. It's really just growing the, the actual uh, project itself, which, you know, is a goal in mind, but the community is also the the, the biggest cornerstone in, the, you know, what you're doing there, the acts of, of kindness and generosity is very appreciated within the communities itself. And that's something I haven't seen many uh, project owners do, right? So I really commend you on that, uh, honestly. Um, I don't know if Richard or Stephen want to add anything on to that um, before I get into my next question. but Yeah, real quick, I'll just throw in. I mean, honestly, like you said, you know, how you reach out to the community and, like, give them assistance and help them all. Like, I think you you yourself on and, and the rest of the team have influenced the community to also do the same thing where you, you they all come in and they all help each other and they all i've seen people make banners for each other make make videos animations it's 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 awesome and i really think that you know what you what you guys do is amazing and i'm i'm I, that that's that answer you uh just said really put a smile on my face the, the only thing i'll add to that um is again you know i i think that's going to be a huge part into where we're going, right? Because that's one of the constants uh, that, that we have to, to play with in this scene is belonging. Um, and it's so cool to hear that, that you're right in that realm and you're amping it up, man. So well done. And, and uh, here's the future, man, with LFG. <laughs> um, and so, you know, since we're, since we're talking about the community uh, standpoint, I have another question regarding, you know, regarding that in that sense. Um, so, you know, you said it yourself, right, that um, you love having the community involved in, in the direction of where the project goes. Um, and also, you know, the team uh, at Everi make sure that, you know, those who can uh, contribute are appreciated and noticed. Um, such, you know, when you did the shout out during the ARC brief, uh, briefing during the Twitter space. So, like, based on your experience, right, um, what have you learned from, from this community first approach? Um, and how, how has it contributed to the experience you've built? throughout your uh, your NFT journey. Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot to unpack there, right? And I think, you know, where I could start is kind of, this is the first thing I said to the team when I joined in, right? Where it, essentially, you know, the, the co-founding team is it's a good mixture of people, right? We have, we have two CTOs who we have really true development, one really focused on smart contract, uh, Remy, um, and Chris, who's really focused on, you know, the design and the product aspect. I was also a developer as well. And then there's Brian, you know, who's our CEO. And then when I joined in, you know, I'm like, it's not like I'm a developer. It's not like, you know, I wanted to be the CEO. But what I came in when I said to the team, the first thing I was like, I will always be the voice of the community, right? Whether that's positive or negative sentiment, I'm always here to echo the voice and make sure, you know, the community is heard. And, you know, and I think, you know, throughout this journey and throughout Everi, right, there has been a lot to learn for me personally, right? And, and honestly, I, I do my honest best, but sometimes it's quite hard, right? There's there's a lot of voices, right? And we, and we never expected Everi to grow to the point it was. I mean, we obviously hope for it and it, it's awesome to hear. And I think that's also where I'm learning too, right? Where it's in a way like I'm the bridge between the team, but, you know, even sometimes I feel that I'm not able to, you know, have all those voices be heard. So, I think for me, it's the biggest learning experience is kind of, you know, how do you how do you aggregate? How do you curate all the information that's coming from everywhere, whether it's not always in Discord, sometimes it's Twitter, right? Sometimes like we have a WeChat group, right? 
Um, and it's really that experience of learning. And, and thankfully, you know, like we started scaling our team, like huge shout out to Sizzle, who, you know, it's kind of crazy. We joined, you know, he just joined our team as a community manager. Um, and we met in Azuki. And I think the community of first approach, though, it really, it helps. I never expected my path to go this way, you know, but really what it does is by really like being in touch with the community and kind of what's going on and what people are saying, how people are feeling. Um, it really helps influence also a lot of like the product and the product design. So, you know, I'm really deep in touch with the product team. You know, I'm really deep in touch now with like the art and the Lord team, because it's always like, um, you know, in a way it's not like, Hey, like the community said this, so let's go do this. It's more so like, Hey, on, on top of the things that we're doing, you know, here's kind of things that the community would feel, think, or, you know, some suggestions, right? And and I think that's where the balance that, that where it gets, it, it's the fun part, but also the challenge, right? And that's what kind of keeps me, you know, going. And that's where I'm always learning as well, right? Is, is you know, how do you really balance, you know, the community voice, but also not lose the vision of the team, right? Because I think a lot of people, you know, and, and for us personally, right, love you know they believe and trust in the team and and i love the team and trust what we're doing but you know at the end of the day as well everyone in the community have you as part of the team so it's always it's kind of like a yin and yang thing right where you know i don't think it's good to be you know dictated by the community right and there may be some people that would say the product project should do this it should go this way right um but you also got to remember that's just like one person's opinion and not maybe the opinion of everyone in the community Right. So that's really why I come in to kind of really balance that out. And, you know, whether it's through thick and thin, right, some days, you know, everyone's vibing. Some days, you know, some people are upset. Some people are, you know, vibing some day, you know, and, and I think that's that's really the core of it. Right. Is it, it comes all comes down to balance and it all comes down to, you know, communication. And I really think that uh, and huge shout out to everyone in the community that's, you know, always like they're always contributing, right? And I always love that everyone has ideas, everyone has a way to contribute, you know, not everyone is an artist, right? But, you know, some people want to learn art. Um, and then some people in the community want to help each other. So I'm really there too. I think one part is balance. And the other part is also like connecting dots between people, right? And, and those are the two biggest things that I would say, you know, have really like learned to it. And I think, you know, to unpack the question for the second part is, you know, how does it contribute to the experience um, that we've built is that, you know, I think in the long term, you know, looking back, you know, if we were to go to like, you know, two or three years, right. You know, the a lot of what we're doing in Everi and in the origin program is a great example is, you know, we're a team that's really big on experimenting and, you know, essentially like trying new concepts. Right. And, and what we want to see in the space and what we think is fun. Right. And the biggest thing that contributes from the community there is that, you know, on the course of a few years, after we try a few things, we launch a few things, may, everything may not be, you know, uh, polished, or may not be like the best thing at the start, but through the communities, like feedback, you know, through the experience of building together, um, and really through going through iterative cycles, like we're going to get to that point where, you know, all, all these new things and all these new products that we're launching is going to be at that point where everyone like feels like they contribute to it, right? It could just be even something simple of like, hey, you know, we want to test a small feature. Is there 10 people in the community that could test it before it goes live, right? And, and you know, huge, you know, huge shout out to Hunt. When that happened to like last week, you know, before the website went up, reached out to, to Hunt. He's uh, the newest pilot, by the way, in the community. So huge shout out again. And he was, and I was like, hey, hey man, does this make sense, right? Just, is this something as simple as like the information on the page? And he, you know, because also like a lot of our team aren't native English speakers and, you know, he gave a whole like, <laughs> uh, you know, like a whole detailed feedback and like, holy shit, like, like that led to so many changes on like little changes on the website, you know, to help make it so much more clear for everyone in the community that when it launched, right. And, you know, that's the smallest scale of what it can be, but you know, where it can go is really like, it's just super valuable to the team. Right. Um, and I think it's, in turn, super valuable to the community and everyone that's in Everi, you know, to have people that are so actively involved in the process. And, you know, and I think at the end of the day, when we go to two or three years, we're going to do that many times and at many scales. And, you know, we get to a point where, like, it's going to be like, holy shit, like, 
hunt you don't know how far like those words that you sent me went <laughs> you know what i mean we literally later that night like rewrote the whole copy for the website <laughs> you know just to be like oh man like if hunt's confused a little bit and he is like you know you know really active in the community like i can't imagine someone who doesn't know anything about everest i'm like we gotta like redo all of this real quick you know and it wasn't you know it wasn't redoing the design it was just really like rewording rearranging some things um and it got to the point where you look at the origin you know program briefing um and it's a very streamlined process and, and it's very easy to understand so uh, you know, I kind of rambled a bit there, but uh, you get the point. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, that was perfect. And like, that's, that's like the power of what like NFTs and like NFT communities bring to the table is the ability to really have that feedback loop like never before and really have your ear close to um, the people who want to contribute the most and, and really, um, you know, see the vision that you that you entail as well. Um, and so that's like amazing that, you know, the way you set that up. Because like I said, again, there's not many uh, NFT projects or companies out there that are currently doing this with their communities and really empowering them, giving them uh, the say and allowing them to really contribute in ways. I, I was actually talking about that with Steven. Like, imagine you're able to to really do something. You, you just give some advice and then you see that displayed across the project you're investing to. And you're like, damn, I did that. Like, that's freaking that's freaking sick, you know, like and just it really it really. You, excuse me, I don't know. I'll let Richard. Uh, join on that part yeah so I, I, again you know i everything that i'm that i'm hearing you know that I, you know i've been seeing you know I, I think it's you're you're you know you've done your research and 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 you know that's the biggest thing is locating the most supportive passionate you know driven community members and and enabling them to make a difference and i again you know i i think you know again we're we're pioneers we are so far ahead of you know, the curve, you know, the masses and, you know, in the next two to five years, you know, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be classes that'll start, you know, they'll start teaching all of these elements and how do you have, you know, a, a winning uh, system, you know, that, that really activates the community and hits everything to make sure that, that again, the community has influence because then, you know, they're your investors. So the more that you have these individuals in there and the most passionate ones that know the deepest and, they can have the, the biggest effect, you know, again, that's, it's all music to my ears. And, you know, I, I see a dream becoming a reality. Well said, well said. And honestly, yeah, I can't really add too much to that. You said that perfectly and took the words straight out of my mouth, <laughs> but um, yeah, honestly, I'll just go into the next question and I will continue from there. So um, yeah. So for those who are just learning about Everite today, um, I mean, for those who are invested, you know this, but for those who are just learning, Duo is the first hero in the ever-expanding Everite universe. So recently, those who've held their Duos through the NFT NYC event, they received uh, one memory core and one origin archive. So as an investor, we're all curious on the latest amount announcement regarding this and uh, how it ties into the overall vision altogether. Hi, <laughs> going for the leak, Steven, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, I'm really happy to talk about this. And we're going to host uh, an official AMA um, later next week as well. But, uh, you know, I really want to open the platform and really, you know, open the doors, you know, to the origin program. Because to me, it's, it's, it's very exciting. So uh, let's unpack this a little bit um, deeper, right? So how it how it ties into the overall vision i'll start from the lore standpoint right so from the lore standpoint the overall vision these each moment each archive right there's nine different ones all tied to a key moment of shodai history so in a way you know for the anime fans out there think about it as like the flashback arc right these are all key moments in the lore all key moments in our universe that affected to the situation that we're in today Right. So and, and that's why the, you know, the catchphrase is really you must you know, know the past in order to save the future. Right. Because, you know, the civilization, you know, essentially. This through these events and in the lore, people will be able to understand, you know, why the arts took off, you know, why the Shodai civilization fell, why we have to rebuild, you know, why it ever I came to existence. Right. It's going to answer a lot of the questions and in a way. What I say, it sets up the foundation you know, for the future and the path that we're on now, right? And and for us as well, and from the Everite perspective, right, like, we could have just, like, released that, you know, on a piece of paper, 
right? Um, you know, but it's so much more fun to explore that in a way and that it's like a collectible, the way I look at it, it's like a collectible trading card game in a way, right? Kind of mixed with some gacha game mechanics and and essentially each chapter, right? So there's nine different archives and each chapter could be leveled up three times. Um, and in that way too, you're kind of exploring and expanding the world, you know, as you collect it and as you go. And, you know, there's a little alpha too, or playing around with the idea of like whoever unlocks it first, if there's any World of Warcraft players out there, there'll be like a little world's first achievement. Um, and also like from the development standpoint, we really wanted to experiment about, you know, because we're all like deep cut gamers, you know, and, and World of Warcraft is very dear to our hearts. But, you know, we're not going out there and making an MMO, but, you know, what we think is fun about the origin program and about NFTs and Web3 and blockchain is that you're able to apply some gamified mechanics, you know, through ways that can also build the universe and tie it in through lore and combine it with art, right? And and that's to us is like really the beauty of, of this. And that's how it also ties into the overall vision from a technical perspective, right? It's like, it's it's much faster to ship you know, gamified mechanics applied to blockchain and NFTs than it is to ship a game, you know? So like for us as well, it, it's like moving us towards the path of where we want to go. Um, and also from a lore perspective, it's setting up the foundation of our world, you know, and also where we want to go on the arc. So in that way, it's really, you know, to sum it all up, it's setting up the foundation, you know, for the whole Everite crew and Everite universe to push forward, right? Because, you know, for us as well, right and if you were and we're going to release a timeline next week so that's a little more alpha as well you're going to see the timeline of these events and how they affected um the past right so they all happen through the you know a, a very long course of time right it's not like these events were like one after the other it's like you know one of the stories oh man i'm just going i'm going to go leak city i guess but you know but like one of the you know one of the stories ties into like you know the first ever i being created right one of the stories, you know, ties into what we call the Nova Burst, right? Which is like when they first, they essentially like, you know, blew up, you know, one of the whole planets to buy time for the rest of the civilization um, to run, right? One of the stories ties into evacuation, right? And, and it ties into like the City of Wonders and the evacuation of this, uh, you know, massive city. Right. And, and it just, yeah, I can't, oh, I was, I'm not going to give away all of them, but you know, there's like a few of them there. You know, one of my favorite ones is called the resurgence, right? Where it's one of the stories where the, where they, the show they were able to fight back. Right. And so you're also going to understand a little bit, you know, when something we haven't talked about before about like the villain of our universe, right? Like who are they fighting? Right. Like, why are they running? You know, uh, and, and a lot of these questions will be answered through the origin program and, and through these archives, um, and essentially as well, you know, not only do we learn from the past, and this is where I give a huge shout out uh, to the lore team, right? Um, the program itself in the present day is the act of training as a pilot, right? If we were to, you know, attribute this to something, you know, um, that a lot of people know, it's like a tuning exam or your hunting exam license, right? Where, you know, as an aspiring pilot, you have to go through this program in order to understand the past. And, you know, through all of this, too, it funnels into where we're going, you know, as a community. So in a way, like, by understanding the past and by doing it actively through the present, it's not just like, you know, here, here's an archive and, you know, uh, here's a memory and, and here's a story of the past. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, as a pilot, all of us here, as, as people in the community, you know, we're actively learning through this. In a way, it's a test, right? Um, and after all of this, after you collect it, after the origin program's done, um, man, oh man, I almost. <laughs> I almost... You're getting close. <laughs> I'm getting close. Uh, uh, the next chap, uh, the next phase will unlock. I'll just say that, right? And you know, and everything that we're doing in the present is really on this journey, right? Okay, I'll give a little leak without giving more, right? So the 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 whole purpose of us in the present day of the arc is our goal is to find a new world and rebuild our civilization. Right. And we are the generation of people on the arc that have not known our home world. Right. We time skip a little bit since uh, we have, the, you know, the last depart, the great departure is what we call it. Right. So essentially, you know, all the aspiring pilots are this generation of people on the arc that have not seen a world outside. Right. And you're going to be introduced soon to our main character, um, you know, who is a pilot in training, who whose only goal is to leave the arc and expand the world out there and and really driven by the curiosity, see 
see other worlds, to set foot on a new world, right? To explore the universe, right? And I think that attributes to a lot of us too, uh, you know, in the Web3 space. So, you know, but in order to first do that, you know, you must first understand, you know, why we're on the arc in the first place and why the civilization is the way it is and, and why we have to go work so hard and, and essentially uh, discover the world out there and rebuild. So I know there's a lot there, but uh, I hope that helps answer some of the questions. Yeah, dude, I, oh, I'm, I'm just getting excited just listening to all of that. That's freaking insane. <laughs> you guys, you, you really did put in so much work into this. And um, me being a huge anime fan myself, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to all of this. Um, I wanted to say before, also before we get into like the next questions and stuff, everyone here, thank you for joining. I just wanted to, uh, you know, shout everyone out. Um, thank you for taking the time on a Saturday on the weekend to listen to this. Um, throw up some emojis in here if you're uh, if you're loving what you're hearing right now, and I appreciate you all here today. Um, so yeah, so wow, that was <laughs> that's a lot to unpack. Everyone's gonna have to rewind. You're gonna see so many replays on this <laughs> after <laughs> after it's ended, just from all the stuff. But um, Stephen, I guess you can go on to the next question since uh, it's your time on this, and then we can go from there. For sure, for sure. And uh, yeah, and we came through with the alpha. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so uh, actually, since we were speaking on the NFT NYC event before, I actually, I just wanted to give you and the entire team like appreciation uh, for actually creating such an amazing experience for those who attended in person and those who attended virtually. It was, it honestly reminded me of like a MLG event. It was, it was so cool, dude. It was so cool. Um, Also, in addition to that, the experience to mint the origin archive and the memory core was also incredible as well. So I was just wondering, uh, can we expect any similar community experiences, whether in person or virtual in the near future? Yeah, so you're talking on um, community experience, you mean um, like the event specifically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so honestly, that was our first event. And, you know, at first we weren't going to, you know, just a little bit of retrospect, like we weren't initially planning to do anything at the NFT NYC. But, you know, with the whole team going there and the opportunity arose, we're like, you know, let's full send it. And it was really an all hands on deck thing. And, and it was just, it was just crazy to see it come together. Right. And I, you know, I see a lot of people that were there, you know, in the call, right. Huge shout out, you know, insight, uh, you know, Juniverse was there, you know, that's where I met Hunt for the first time. I remember when I, <laughs> I, I didn't even have to see Hunt, but I just look up all he said was on the loop. And I look up and I was like, I already know what's up, dude, <laughs> you know? So like, and and to me, like, that was one of the coolest things, right? And and for me as well, it wasn't just the act of the event. It was just really having the opportunity to meet a lot of people that we talk to every day in person. Um, and to me, that was one of the coolest parts, right? Um, and and for and again, like, from, from a longer-term standpoint, I want to do more of those, right? They may not always be at that scale. They may be bigger than that scale, right? NFT Paris is something, you know, that we're big looking forward to in the future, you know, to, to, to give a direct answer to the question, um, you know, we are planning NFT at Paris event uh, for next year. But, you know, also something I want to do on the much smaller scale is really just kind of travel the world and meet people in person, right? And and I think that's, to me, you know, that that's something that's value, right? Like, you know, insight, you know, I'm going to go on the, the insight lore, right? Uh, you know, insight someone that, you know, I met like very early on, you know, in the Everai community, like, you know, pre mint. Um, he was the one that got me on eighty six. I think, you know, the whole the insight crew, that's all right, the the nine lions crew shout out. Um, they were they were a big reason why we have anime nights and they were a big reason like, you know, why we had ARAM, right? And it was always like this crew that we gamed with and watched anime with together and we always, you know, DJ about. Um and then, you know, before the event even right we met up when we were collecting our azuki wristbands and you know afterwards uh i think i was supposed to go to eight fest after but i was like eight fest can wait like let's go get dinner <laughs> you know so it was just like it was just really cool to just even just have that dinner in person right and and to talk about like a lot of things that we were doing online but in per- it was like really doing the same things we do online but in person you know <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, so I think that's like for me, right, on the on the smaller scale, something I want to do more of, like, you know, I know we have a lot of holders in Asia, right? And, you know, a little bit about myself as well. Um, you know, the start of my career was in Shanghai, and I spent a, a few years, you know, in Asia, and a lot of my 
not only, you know, like good friends, but a lot of my family's over there. And, you know, and it's just crazy to think that like, I haven't been back since, you know, I think at this point, like four years, but like, you know, I think that's a big part of me too, is as, as, as crazy as it sounds, you know, I kind of just want to like travel vlog around the world <laughs> and just go and go meet holders in person. Right. And, and, and this is an idea that we joked around a lot in the past uh, within our team. But I was just like, should we just have people vote on where we go next? <laughs> you know, like and I think that's like at the smallest scale of what can be done. But, you know, again, to like kind of bring us back because I tend to go on tangents. If I ever go too far, just stop me. But, uh, you know, to, to bring it back. Right. I think it's, you know, in person for sure. You know, some, and it's also something we want to scale up for. Right. You know, that being our first event, you know, and relatively you know, uh, last minute, honestly, uh, from the planning perspective, you know, we really want to like scale up, up our set. Uh, oh my God, my English. Uh, we really want to scale up our event as we grow as well, right? And have more lead time um, as well to go to events. So, you know, that's why I really think that NFT Paris next year, you know, is, is the next target goal for us for an in-person event. But, you know, again, I'm bringing bring it back to the virtual side. And that's why I want to give huge shout out Mild Bits you know, as well in the audience, he's a part of the Everide team. And, you know, we met actually in the Game of Box community before, but he ran the whole live stream, right? And that live, and, and the live stream was not easy. <laughs> you know, you're running in different cameras and there's a YouTube video for those that haven't seen it, you know. Uh, it was crazy. Like, Mild Bits has a live production experience, you know, through TV for many, many years. And to bring that value you know, to the Everi team and, and therefore to the Everi community was, was amazing because for the people that couldn't attend in person, and that's also my thing for events as well, it's right. I, I still, when we want to do live events in person, I still want to include the whole community because not everyone can come, right? And even if everyone could come, it's not like you could find an event space for everyone as well, right? And the last thing I want to do is like gate people or make people feel excluded you know, just because they couldn't get a plane ticket or, you know, maybe they were busy that day, you know? So that's where I think, you know, it's always for us, you know, really making it so you, even though if you aren't there in person, you're still with us in spirit. Um, and through mild business experience, you're, you're also able to be there virtually. Um, and, and I think, you know, that, that to me is always the key when we do these things. And, you know, again, to unpack it a little bit, you know, on the, that was a bigger scale to bring it back on the smaller scale. You know, I definitely want to bring back more of those just virtual hangouts, right? Um, and that's where, again, like, huge shout-out Sizzle, a little more alpha. We're going to be bringing back a lot of community events. So Sunday, uh, this Sunday coming out, there's going to be a calendar for just events throughout the week. You know, movie nights, anime nights, spaces. You know, we're really just going, you know, like, and again, huge, huge love to Huntero. Uh, whereas really that, going back to our roots of, you know, why a lot of us were in Everide and a lot of the fun that was there because, you know, this is honestly, you know, on me as well, but sometimes, you know, I guess got so caught up in product. We got, we were so deep in the NFT NYC event. It was all hands on deck that, you know, to me, just, I personally didn't have the time to run a lot of these and, and see a lot of people in the community stepping up and Sizzle's really killing it with bringing all of us back, you know, to these roots. So, um, essentially just want to bring it back to those virtual hangouts that we always did, you know, and the big events being NFT Paris next year. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's like you're basically, you know, creating your own community roadmap too and, and planning that out in that basis. So that's, that's great that you're taking that. And um, also for the fact that you, you're, you know, you're, you're using uh, a way to schedule everything and keep everyone informed because <laughs> I've seen a lot of other, you know, there's other communities out there that just kind of throw out events um, on the announcement channel, right? And kind of get everyone going, but not many people join and don't really coordinate it that way. So the fact that you guys are actually really playing this out strategically and, and making sure that everyone can be involved, right? And going back to those roots is, is honestly really beautiful. Um Rich, I don't know if you want to add anything from that from your experience, uh, you know, during a lot of communities here, so. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing, you know, um, from, you know, just all the communities is just to make sure, you know, that you focused on utility and finding ways to, prov to provide a long-term, sustainable, competitive advantage that's hard to imitate, right? Because 
if we're working on things that others can copy very easily, it's going to give you short term gains and it's not really worth it. So as long as those, th- those things are in mind and we're aware of the incoming trend where, you know, supreme utility, you know, that's going to be, you know, one of the deciding, one of the main deciding factors from, from who takes it to the next level, you know, all's good. Yeah, and I want to I want to bring it back. Oh, I don't know, if, Andrew, if you want to say something before I. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, but you brought up such a good point, right? And I think that's, again, to bring it all back to balance is my biggest learning experience in the position I'm in is that, right? Our whole our whole team is very product focused, right? Um, and and a lot of that, and and a lot of before, you know, I really got deep into the product as well. I was able to you know, spend a lot of time in the community, a lot of time hosting events, anime nights. But, you know, as the brand grows and as as you said, right, like the incoming trend is always like, you know, what am I going to do with my NFT, right? At, at some point, right, I just, I'm only one person, you know, I didn't have the bandwidth to do both. Uh, so that's why I'm really excited to go back to our roots. So it enables me to also focus on the product that like you said, that that is the long term. But, you know, to also not, you know, to also empower people in the community, and again, huge shout out to Sizzle, to host these events that I just quite frankly didn't have as much time for, as much as I want to. I miss it the most, actually. That was the most fun I had. You know, now my days consist of being in meetings with the devs and the artists and the product team, which is amazing, and I love it. But I do miss those nights where we were able to just kick it. So, you know, I think that's that's also something as well. And, you know, the, you know we have been pretty quiet, right? And, and I'm really excited to just, like, like you said earlier, right? Just get back to our roots. Um, and that came with like being able to scale the team. So, you know, I just want to say much love and, and thank you for bringing up that point because it that is the future and that is how companies and brands sustain, right? But also, you know, it's the, I always come back to yin and yang is a very core to my, uh, core to myself where it's just like the other balance of that is that, the, you know, the community and having fun along the way. Right. So because products do take a lot of time to make, right, they go through a lot of development cycles, a lot of iterations before it even comes to light, before you can even talk about it, you know, like the origin program itself has been in the works for the last like, three, four months, (laughs) you know, but during that time, you know, when it was just me, uh, it was really hard to to do both. So, you know, and and we really solved that solution by scaling. And again, like, I'm going to gas up sizzle all day. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited to, you know, to bring those vibes back uh, of the roots of wherever I really began. So while we focus on everything for the long term, so much love to everyone again. And, and thank you for bringing up that point. I think it's, it's really important to talk about. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think this is a great time. We've, we've talked a lot and you've mentioned it a lot about branding, right? And I even picked out a few words from your, uh, you know, what you were saying earlier, like you creating your own, your own vlogs, right. And stuff like that and really showcasing it. So, you know, when it, when it comes to building a brand, honestly, uh, your team does a really great job um, at it and connecting and uniting and activating your community. Um, And, you know, the overall uh, presence that ever I, that ever I family has on Twitter, for example, is honestly awesome and really enhances your social presence. So I wanted to know, is there, anything specific that has helped you achieve this great social media presence? I know beforehand you used to have, you know, a lot of time uh, creating videos and content on YouTube and stuff, and you kind of transition that into, well, you know, what you're doing with Everi. Um, And so for all the project founders that are going to be listening or are listening right now, um, I think this is really crucial because I think personal branding um, and just branding in general is very important um, in the early stages of any NFT project. Oh, yeah, it's a great point. And, and this might sound a little cringe, but uh, we have a phrase within the team. And uh, I, think, I don't know if Super Sogan's here, uh, but uh, I see you using the audience as well. Like all of us came from, um, whether it became from streaming world or it became from YouTubing, but kind of like there's this phrase that we always say, and it's just ABCs, it's always be contenting, <laughs> you know? And I think we used, used to have a lot more um at the beginning but again like it it brings back to like you know i was only one person you know when we started and our team was we started with four people went to six and now we're up to uh we're pushing 16 people um and a lot of that is going to enable us to be content contenting a lot more like you know i don't know if we saw like the lisbon vlog you know um going to paris on sunday uh we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of vlogging there and you know and it's just a lot of what i think 
you know, as well, it's personal presence and, and like leading by example in a way. Um, but also like there's just points in the community where like none of us could have expected the amount of dude. Like there was one point where like I couldn't go one post without seeing an ever I post and I loved it. Right. You know, like right after we did it with the forever I hashtags. But it's also on the team to give the community activations that they could play off of, right? You know, at the beginning, you know, when we had the mint, it was it was it was re- not re- it wasn't easy, but this was everything was about duo, right? Everything was about um, you know your your forever eye, right? Finding your forever eye, uh, playing on that. But you know, as months go on, there's only so much content the community could post about one thing, right? And that's where I think it's also on the team to give more. Right. And that's why I'm excited for the origin program, because essentially it gives us a lot more storylines to explore. Therefore, a lot for for the community to imagine, to create from, to post about. Right. And also from my end. Right. It gives me a lot to play on and it gives me a lot more um, imagination. Right. And cause that's where I think the step like the root of creativity comes from. Right. And, and that's always been for me, you know, the my, the beauty of MRI. Right. Is that we are imagining and we are creating this this dream sci fi world. Um, and if the team doesn't output content for the community to imagine with and to create from, right, it's obviously gonna be a lot more quiet. And I think it's seen, we've seen that a little bit in the last few months, but also, you know, from the team's perspective and, and what I miss the most as well are those personal vlogs is peeling back that layer. So, you know, I think it took a while to get organized and, you know, it took a while to, to really set up that foundation of the next phase. But, you know, as we enter this new cycle, um, I'm excited to just see everything light up again on Twitter. And and honestly, for me as well, personally, like I've been I've been pretty quiet. It's just, it's just it was just hard bandwidth wise, you know, to spend out, you know, my days before really it was just really spent on Twitter and Discord, you know. But now it's like I feel like, you know, uh, I'm excited to bring that back and really just start posting, doing a lot more spaces. I, I personally just like hanging out like this and just chatting with you all you know, and, and doing a lot more of this because I think, you know, as, you know, I, you, your question was, you know, advice to other founders is, is really like, you know, lead by example, right? If if you want, if you want to see more of the community in spaces, host spaces yourself, you know, if you want to see more of the community posts, you know, post yourself as well, right? Uh, I can't expect people to do things and want people to do things if you're not doing that yourself as well. Um, and I think that that stems from the team, you know, that stems from the founding level. Um, and personally, again, like I, I've just been quiet, not because I wanted to, it's just because like some days I was just like, oh my God, this is way too many meetings today. I'm like kind of burnt, you know, but like at the point where, and it's a conscious decision for me as well. And to the team where it's just like, okay, like now we're ready. You know, we have, we have this whole, we have nine storylines that we're ready to explore that lead us to the next chapter of our whole universe together, you know, and like, we're all set. We're all good to go ready to launch the product. And I'm like, that's why I said they let on the leak out of the cage. I'm like, all right, can I go out now? <laughs> can I, can I go be uh, can I go be me on Twitter? Can I go leak around? Can I just go hang out, be a degenerate on spaces, <laughs> you know, can we host anime nights? And it's just like, you know, bring, and again, I think that brings us back to our roots. Right. So, and again, I think it's, you know, to any other advice I would give as well to other founders is like you have to be authentically you right don't become this version of you um, that you project on social media and, and and that to me is the biggest thing that I'm really grateful from learning from like the YouTube and streamer worlds right it's like you would see people in person be completely different than they are you know online and and to me that was always kind of not the vibe I ever wanted personally right it may work for some people people may may like that but for me personally you know I'm always just being me right and and the version of me that I'm having the most fun with right and and I think that from a project founder level is a lot of of the community that you will attract as well right and and a lot of people with similar interests a similar vibe right and just never stop being you if I were to give advice to people, right? Because, you know, the space could change people, money could change people, you know, um, clout can change people. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you stay true to who you are, you know, you won't lose yourself. What I always say, you won't get lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's really cool because you're seeing like the, the huge transition already. Like, I mean, TikTok took the storm with user generated content and 
really gave the power to people to create their own content really um well also the algorithm blew that up but now you're seeing meta trans uh transition into that and a bunch of other platforms now and <clears throat> you're kind of creating your own basically your own system of user generated content of your own uh within your own community which is amazing and again not many not many uh, projects out there are doing what you're doing right now in that sense um uh which is amazing because like you said it, it can be really hard and you know, I've when we advise some some projects uh, and the founders um, for their NFT projects, right? Like that's one thing that that we kind of tell them at times too is, uh, and you said it yourself is like looking to to post on a consistent basis because if if you want to do something, uh, you know, if you want to see your community do something, you do it first, right? You be that first mover. You start to step up and and bring it on. And obviously, it can be hard. Um, you know, even in this space, there's so much craziness going on. But um, it's really important, you know, building that genuine connection, especially at a time now where the market is is really crazy. And um, a lot of people are drained from the last, I don't even know, like last year or so, just all this craziness. Um, it, it really allows you to establish that trust and, and that actual real connection with the people um, all the way across the world, like for the first time ever, right? Like everyone here right now, we're all behind a screen. Um, and, you know, the voice aspect does does a lot but really seeing that person uh create content and bring themselves out there build up their personal brand um and become that thought leader and tell you the ups and downs and stuff it, it goes a long way right like that one percent every day it adds up exponentially so honestly kudos to you and taking the effort and time and i'm really excited to see more vlogs and stuff once you start to get in the hang of things and hopefully you're not gonna be too bombarded with work but uh i don't doubt it i mean this space is a uh, really a uh, it's really hard not to, but um, yeah. yeah, that's also so. Yeah, you touched on such a good point there, man. Where it's just like this is also something for me that I learned. It's like even though I've been in the space for a while, um, I was more of a, a trader, right? Um, but joining it from like building perspective, it moves so fast, and you can never predict how fast it moves. And I think that's where it gets hard when you're building, you know, content creation, right? And a lot of you know the artists, for example, right? Um, they're used to building animes and working on things that take years. You know what I mean? But the NFT space year is like a century. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's really about like finding ways. And that's why I think like little things like blogs or spaces, like, you know, um, go a long way because what I always say, and then, you know, coming from the content world is like, you're always working towards your tentpole pieces of content, right? Like your big trailers, your big animations, you know, your big activations. But the hard part about the space, you know, from a founding level is how do you create content in between? You know, it's because you're not always going to have that, those cycles of building that. I mean, even if you take a look at, you know, the Everide trailer, right? That Everide trailer was 15 seconds. It took six months. You know, that was like one of the first things we activated, you know, when we started the company, <laughs> right? And that was a 15 second animation. Uh, so it's really like about that perspective, like having a mix of content and, and that's where we're really shifting towards as well, because, you know, um, like you said, like we're still learning too. It's not that we know like the best way. And a lot of, a lot of what we're doing is adapting to the current times. And we're like, oh my God, like, yeah, like we can't wait for, um, these temple pieces of content. Right. So we're like, how do we, how do we create engaging content in between? And right. And that's why I like little things like vlogs, bringing events back, anime nights back right um things like the origin program right and creating content around that and empowering user generated content right and i think that's where it gets um you know that's also something that i wish we could um you know do better of too right it's like i'm not able to see everything on twitter right i'm sure there's things that i've seen or have missed and it's not that they like, it's not that that content is less valuable or less appreciated than something we retweet on the main account it's just that Sometimes with the algorithm and sometimes with the time of day, just don't have eyes on everything, right? So, you know, something else that I'm really pushing on within the team is a curation platform, right? Um, it, could, it could start as simple as something on Reddit, but, you know, my ideal world is bringing something to the website that's just what I call the Hall of Heroes, right? <laughs> Where it's just everyone that's contributed, everyone that's made a piece of content will live forever on the website, right? And obviously things that take time like that, because that's a whole product in itself. But, you know, I think it could start simply and, you know, start on a place like Reddit. Um, you know, Sizzle's working on a cool activation, too, um, called the Crew Gazette. But, you know, um, and essentially we want to make a little magazine 
um, that essentially highlights pieces of maybe from the community, events that happen, but, you know, things like that as well. It takes time to make the design of the art, you know, so that's really what, you know, we're working towards. And again, we're not perfect. We're, we're doing the best we can with what we have. But, you know, when we go in the course of two or three years, like, I can't wait to look back at something like the Hall of Heroes and be like, damn, like, this is everything the community has made, you know, and each time, you know, a new a new foundation of the lore and the IP is launched and inspires and sparks creativity, like, it just adds on to that. And when we look back in history of the Everide journey, being able to have that all in one place is something I'm personally super excited for. Because it is the hardest part, you know, um, for sure, like, on Twitter, you know, even me, I don't know what they did, but I see, I, I see a lot of stuff like missing just from my friends, you know, I'm like what happened? <laughs> like, I don't want to see half this stuff sometimes, you know? So it's just like, I can't imagine the stuff that I've missed. And again, it, it kind of makes me, you know, a little sad that I'm not able to see everything. I wish I could be scrolling 24 seven, you know? So that's why I think the curation is, is really one of the big things I would advise to other project founders and think about that early. Like, I wish that's something, you know, I thought about months ago, the Hall of Heroes thing. But, you know, it's only something that came out in the last, you know, few months. And then the result was because I was just like, yo, like, I'm missing out on some stuff from the community. And, and it, but again, I don't ever want to make someone feel that their, that their efforts were for nothing, right? And, and or feel like less appreciated because I appreciate every piece of content, whether it's a, you know, dedicated fan art or whether even it's just someone writing their version of a storyline. You know, it could be the biggest thing, it could be the smallest thing, but whenever someone creates in the community, I'm always just so honored, you know, because in a way, it's just like, it's crazy to see that your work inspires other people to create. Um, and that's really like the goal and the vision of Everrise to create this expansive universe that inspires creators from all over, like you said, all around the world, right? And it's so cool. Everyone has a different perspective. Everyone has a different background. Everyone has a different interpretation. But to see that manifested into something that we all share together, which is Everi, to me, that, that, that's just beautiful, honestly. Yeah, that was an amazing response. And it's <clears throat> it's cool, too, because, like, there's a lot of I, – I don't know, too, if you're doing a lot of ways with, like, long-form content, like, extracting multiple uh, short-form content from that long-form, like, videos and stuff. You can make that break, that – break those up into, like, mini posts and do all those things, right? There's, there's a lot of ways you can – do it and then also empowering the community too like there's so many different aspects of it um and that's that's like, <clears throat> like you said it's like the, the hardest part is because this space moves so fast it's like okay what is the next thing i gotta do okay what is the next thing like you're always jumping on and trying to to, to basically one-up yourself every single day i think that's what is like the coolest part about being in this space too is you're always trying to be a better version of yourself the next day right even as a founder like you you're always challenging yourself um, and looking for the next thing to do to to really empower you um, and to be like, hey, like I'm competing with myself, right? Like you said to yourself, like looking at other people and comparing yourself to other people, like can you take over your mindset. Um, and if you can kind of take a step back and be like, no, what? I'm competing with myself this time. Like screw everyone else. Like this is me who I'm competing with. That's where it all comes from. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, all power to you. Um, and by the way, guys, um, you all for joining um we are basically at well we are at the end now we have no more questions but honestly it was uh, honestly this was one of the best spaces that we've had it was a pleasure speaking with you um and learning so much uh deep insights i cannot wait hopefully we can have this again because this was just amazing especially from all the experience that you've had in this space um and to everyone here thank you for joining um, throw up some emojis. You know, I appreciate everyone here taking out an hour of their day to listen to us on a Saturday. I hope you guys are all laying back and enjoying this. Um, if you uh, if you do uh, want to check out uh, Everi, you know, uh, we have the um, the links to their Twitter on our post as well, so you can check them out. If it's your first time listening to Everi, I would really appreciate you checking them out. They've done an amazing job. Um, and yeah, I mean, I hope you guys. I really enjoyed this and stay tuned. This, this is going to be, well, this is our fourth episode. So we're going to have another one very soon. Um, and you can find this on our YouTube channel as well. If you want to listen back as well as you can replay this on Twitter, but uh, YouTube, you know, it's, it's cool. We break it up into different segments as well. So um, yeah, again, thank you all. And I guess if you guys want to do some outros, but I really appreciate your time today. 
Yeah, uh, real quick, I just want to give a quick appreciation to the whole Everai fam, everyone that's in here, including Andalou. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure just to speak in front of so many familiar new faces, and uh, especially with uh, Andalou, who I've been in contact with for a while now, and, you know, truly have formed uh, a great friendship with, and I really appreciate, you know, just each and every single one of you. Y you all are making a, a huge leap in your journey by being here as we're sharing a lot of alpha and I hope to, you know, have you all come back again soon. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be in your orbit and here's to a bright future. Awesome. Thank you all again. You know, huge shout out for hosting this. This has been an amazing space and, you know, and thank you again for inviting me as a guest. And honestly, the organization was beautiful and really well structured. Like, honestly, just huge shout out. Like I, I really, really enjoyed these spaces. Um, and of course, you know, seeing a lot of familiar faces in the crowd. Thank you again. Uh, telling you all we do more spaces, no joke. <laughs> We're going to be on spaces <laughs> a lot. Um, and as well, you know, um, Kantan is going to be streaming the Discord right after this, actually. Um, you know, really like, you know, if anyone's interested in compositing and you know, Kantan did all the composite for the R. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it's really all the layering, all the colors, all the little effects that made the FRI as beautiful as they are. Um, he's going to be streaming and he's going to be answering questions, talking about, you know, career, life, art, whatever you want. So I'm heading over to there after this. Um, and it's just going to be in our general discord. And again, let's give, you know, much love to everybody here on the speakers panel. Um, and I appreciate everyone in the crew as always. So, you know, thank you again and for spending the time with us and much love, everybody. Yeah. Till next time. Thank you all again. Um, and we hope to see you on our next Twitter space. So take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy your time. Spend some time with your family and friends. Uh, relax. And, uh, yeah, have a good time. I'll, I'll see you guys soon. Take care. See y'all later. Take care, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. Late. Bye. Likewise. Have a good one.